Okay, what I wanna do is talk to you a little bit about the remainder theorem because it's really important for you to understand what the remainder theorem states. And what the remainder theorem says is, if f of x, which I have an example here, is divided by x minus k, which would be a factor, right? If it can be is divided by a factor, then the remainder r is equal to f of k. So what I mean by all of that is, let's say I divide this into this. So to use synthetic division, I'll do 5, 7, and negative 24. So if I divide this into it, what I get is drop down 5, negative 15. Uh, that becomes a uh, negative 8, 24, 0. All right, so my resulting factor would be 5x minus 8, right? But you notice the remainder is 0 right here, right? The what the remainder theorem tells us, which is so cool, is to, I can also determine that this is a factor of this by evaluating the 0. So what I can do is I could say f of k. k in this case is negative 3. So I could say f of negative 3 is equal to 5 times negative 3 squared plus 7 times negative 3 minus 24. So the same thing, if you take your factor, divide it, and you get a remainder 0, if I evaluate for that same 0, guess what? I'm going to, by the fact, by the remainder theorem, I'm sorry, I'm also going to get 0. So let's take a look. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. Minus 3 times, or, well, you don't know it's minus yet, but negative 3 times 7 is negative 21 minus 24. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Of course, by the remainder theorem, it works. Now, this can work for any sort of number. We can even, if I change this, all right, so this evenly divides into it because the remainder is 0. So why is that so important? Well, if you wanted to know if a 0 works, right, or if a factor evenly divides into a polynomial, rather than always having to divide, you can also check your answer by evaluating that 0 by plugging it into the function. So let's take a look. Let's say um, I also wanted to, well, we actually already know what the other factor is, f of x minus 8. But let's try one more example, all right, and see if that works. So let me get in my eraser here. Let's pretend that I want to see x minus 2. Let's see if that works. So let's see, first of all, if we get the same answer. So now my k is positive 2. And I have 5, 7, negative 24. Bring down the 5. 5 times 2 is 10, 17. 17 times 2 is going to be 34, 32. Now, let's evaluate. So let's evaluate for my 0, which is f of 2. So I get 5 times 2 squared plus 7 times 2 minus 24. Well, 5 times 2. I do that. 5 times 2 is 10, 17, 34, 32. Here I get 2 squared, plugging it in. Yep. Oh, no. Yeah. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Plus 7 plus 2 is 14. Minus. That's right, it was negative 24. I was wondering, I'm like, where are the two? It's negative 24. So negative 24, that's 10. I was wondering, I'm like, what's going on here? So therefore, it's not, uh, yeah, it's minus 24, minus 24. I'm like, the answer just doesn't make sense. So 20 plus 14 is 34, minus 24 is 10. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you notice that my zero, when divided to get the, my, my remainder, and then if I evaluate it, I get that same number. That number is also your remainder. So if you want to evaluate functions, whatever that number when you evaluate, that's the remainder of the polynomial. That's why it's so cool. Thanks again for watching.